Let's talk about holiday lets. More and more people, uh, because of the tax changes uh, predominantly, are looking to get into the holiday let sector um, because of the perceived higher returns and the tax advantages that are potentially there for property investors. So let's talk about it. Let's look at some of the schemes that are out there. Let's more importantly look at some of the lending criteria because just because a product's out there, it doesn't mean that they're willing to lend to you. Thank you so much and keep tuned. Hi, it's Brian here from Niche Advice. I thought we'll talk about holiday lets. First of all, some housekeeping rules. Um, we've hit 100,000 viewers. Now that's quite a big achievement, specifically because my channel is not really uh, focused on uh, big, high uh, gearing keywords on YouTube. You know, it is very specific. We talk about specific financing needs in the UK. Um, I, tend, I tend not to go, you know, too much into the whole property investment, uh, you know, doing videos on, on how, how to, you know, do up properties. I tend to just stick to the financing ways of things. But um, thank you very much to everybody that has watched the videos and, and have subscribed and have commented. Um, as you can see from all the comments out there, I do like to come back to you guys for this information. Right, holiday lets. Yes, are they the new thing? Um, well, they've been around for a long, long time, um, but there are more and more, and I'm doing, I'm getting more inquiries. Am I doing more business than I did last year? Probably not. I'm probably doing the same level of business, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I get a lot more inquiries on holiday let. Um, and the reason probably that I'm not doing as much business is because of the um, the lending criteria when it comes to holiday lets. So, and a lot of people see headlines out there and with all of the things, you know, um, uh, YouTube and Google, you see the headlines out there, you see the tax advantages out there maybe because of the interest relief that you can still get on holiday lets. And you think, right, I'm gonna go down this, this route rather than uh, a, a normal sort of buy to let. And some people would make it work and others simply cannot get up, get a buy to let or a holiday let mortgage. So let's talk about that. And for the sake of this video, and I will do another video uh, on, on sort of A, B and B and short term lets. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm going to do a video on just your traditional holiday let properties. So these are the properties that are maybe near the seaside resort. Maybe they're, they're basically near places where people want to go on holiday. Uh, rather than your short-term lets in, I don't know, central London uh, and doing multi-rooms for Airbnb. We'll park that uh, for, for another uh, video. So, although some of the criteria and some of the lending restrictions can apply to the short-term let, holiday let sector as well. So, um, generally holiday lets are seasonal, okay? And the lenders understand that. And the way they will work out uh, the rental calculation very much differs to your traditional buy-to-let mortgage. So your traditional buy-to-let mortgage, the lender will say, okay, well, how much you get a monthly basis? And there's a rental calculation that they will do based on a monthly basis. <clears throat> and whether it's a two-year fixed or five-year fixed, they may vary what they were willing to lend to you. Um, with a holiday let, it's a little bit different because obviously it's gonna go, uh, it's seasonal work, and they've got an average out that, that income over the year. Okay, so um, the way the lenders work it, and the majority of the lenders work it, they will work on a seasonal rental figures. So high season, medium season, and low season. So that's how they will work that. So um, generally, if you come to me for an inquiry, I would say, right, give me an indication of what these figures are for these amounts. Um, and then I will then work out a rental calculation based on that. Now. Different lenders have got different rules on rental calculations and this is number one reason why a lot of people look into it and then come back and say, mm, we can't make it work, we need a greater level of deposit. Uh, and that's because the lenders that are dealing with the holiday let sector, a lot of them, are your traditional building societies. It's not the big boys, it's not the big banks out there, okay? It's the building societies, the regional building societies who've had control over that market and have been, um, and, and traditionally, um, no matter where you go, building societies tend to be more conservative when it comes to rental calculations on traditional buy-to-lets, um, as well as they're a little bit more, um, uh, demanding from a criteria perspective as well. They're a lot more cautious. Uh, and that's simply because they're a smaller lender 
um, and they want to, they, they've got a certain amount of risk appetite. Now that's not with all building societies, some building societies will do, deal with all sorts of risky business, but generally as a rule, building societies tend to be more conservative. And one of the ways they're more conservative when it comes to uh, holiday let is the way they will work out your rental calculation. Um, a lot of them tend to, what they tend to do is they'll work that out, so high, medium and low, and they will work that out based on 130% of rental calculation. Now, what that means is, um, uh, essentially, that's the, that's the rule they will do. Now, some would also go above that and go, look, whatever that figure is, whatever the average figure is, let's say it's a thousand pounds a month average, they will only use 80% of it for rental calculations, okay? So it drops things further, they become more conservative, okay? so. Um, Obviously, each lender that deals with the sector, they've got quite a little bit different rule. They may work on a different uh, pay rate. If it's a five-year fix, they will work on a certain rate, which gives you a more advantageous sort of uh, loan amount. So they've all got various rules. And there are some weird and wonderful rules out there. Um, they don't like, generally don't like holiday parks. So they don't want a property in a holiday park, a lot of them. Uh, another one that I came across, um, which was a bit odd, and they would lend uh, on a certain LT loan to value, so up to 75% a particular lender on a normal holiday let. However, if it was a, uh, if it's a leasehold, they'll reduce that to 60% loan to value. Even if the lease is a thousand years, they'll still in their contract, so they will reduce that. So it's important when you're looking at these properties, although they're houses, they could be leaseholds, okay? So bear that in mind, you might get caught on that one. Um, rate wise you're looking probably about 1%, 1 percent one and a bit percent higher than your normal buy to let mortgage so you've got to take that into account although there are fixed rates out there um, there's quite a few discounted rates or variable rates out there as well so um, you know depending on the rest of your case you would need to uh, you would need to get that checked out generally you need to be a homeowner and the minimum income requirements are a little bit more um, uh, demanding so normally on a buy to let with the m normal lenders uh, they would want 25 uh, 25,000 pounds minimum income although there are a number of lenders that don't have a minimum income at all okay you still need to have an income but you know it's, it's not stringent to say 25,000 pounds when you're dealing with building societies um, they tend to have that minimum income rule so uh, and for, uh, for holiday lets they tend to be more so they tend to be anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40 thousand um, pounds minimum income requirements sometimes more sometimes 80 thousand pounds believe it or not so um, again these are the reasons why some people will look at this option and then uh, decide against it uh, but a lot of people are taking this up um, in terms of in terms of how the process works is generally you fill in the inquiry form with us we'll come back to you with with an option that fits your situation um, and then and then take it through that from an underwriting perspective the lenders want to know um, obviously where your source of funds are coming from why you're looking to get into this sector um, and that you've got a sustainable income because they're building societies they also will look at your background so they will look at the applicant it's not just about the property okay because it's a seasonal thing you know they might you might have a rainy season you might have a bad season you might have floods you might have issues so what the underwriters tend to look for more is what happens if things don't go to plan have you got enough savings have you got good earnings so you can subsidize it if, if something goes wrong okay so it's a little bit more um, demanding than a normal buy to let because they will look at you uh, closer where with a normal buy to let generally if you've got a good enough credit if you've got uh, uh, the income profile whatever that is um, they will tend to base everything on the property the tenancy type and so forth so I hope you found this useful guys we are doing uh, uh, we you know we've been doing this for over years in terms of um, holiday lets if you have found this useful obviously hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell icon um, and yeah i'll catch you on the next one thank you so much and all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker as a mortgage is secured against your home or property it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments niche advice is authorized and regulated by the financial conduct authority